My father always said, in any situation, your entrance is the most important thing. <laughs> Right now, I'm um, actually, no, I will not be doing that. <laughs> really, ever. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, it's a fairly natural reaction. The Ironman triathlon is, after all, sort of a gold standard of endurance. It's a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike ride, and a 26.2 mile run, which, yes, if you're wondering, is indeed a full marathon, all done within the space of 17 hours in one day. Um, I managed to clock in at 16 hours, 22 minutes, and 27 seconds, so just kind of snuck in there. <laughs> Now, if I walked up to anyone on the street and said, if you give me nine months of your life, I can make you an Iron Man, chances are they're going to tell me I'm crazy. <laughs> but with the same spirit, if I walked up to most folks on the street and asked them to live their lives praying without ceasing or to fast daily for a month, once a year for the rest of their lives, I'd probably get the same response. I've come to see endurance sports as a window into the spiritual life. Um, I think that there is a reason that St. Paul says, I have fought the good fight, I have run the race, I have kept the faith. It's because he knew that what resonates in our legs and our bodies, it's going to be easier to resonate within our own hearts. Um, but I think that that connection between endurance and spirituality actually goes a little bit farther than just good imagery. Um, when we push our bodies beyond a certain point, when we come close to what we think is our capacity, I think it gives us a set of skills, attitudes, and understandings that's able to unlock a whole depth to our spirituality and our spiritual life. Um, endurance can actually help us brush up against the infinite, and when that happens, we're able to live more authentically and more deeply. Now, I want to be clear today, I'll be talking about endurance and using examples from my own life, specifically training for long-distance triathlons, but I think that endurance is a very personal definition and it looks different for all of us. Um, so I'm going to see it as basically physical activity that pushes you beyond what your normal capacity is for some extended period of time. Whether that's 10 minutes or 10 hours is up to you. For some folks, endurance is a 5K. For other folks, it's an ultra marathon. For some folks, it's swimming a mile every day. For other works, it's choosing to take the stairs every day at work. It looks different for everyone, and what it matters is what it means for you, not that it's more or less or anything. So that's an important thing to say before we get into stuff. Training for endurance sports is grinding and a slow process. Um, if you were to ask pretty much any triathlete what the hardest part of the whole experience is, they won't actually say race day. 
most of them will say it's that last 45 seconds on the treadmill of a two hour workout on some rainy Tuesday in the middle of February when all you wanna do is get off that damn thing, sit down and have a sandwich. <laughs> Preferably one with lots of bacon on it. <laughs> it's the daily commitment to promises that have been made that don't end with dramatic rewards. And honestly, you'll see that same attitude of fidelity in the healthiest of spiritual people. In our Muslim brothers and sisters, it's that commitment to prayer five times a day, no matter how inconvenient or how interruptive of their normal flow of life it may seem. It's in the Sikh man who every single morning gets up and wraps his hair in a turban because for him that is a visual sign of what he believes. It's in sticking with meditation and prayer even when responses are not coming in the form of writing on a wall or voice from clouds. Believe me, there are days, more days frankly than I would like to admit, when when I'm praying, I honestly am somewhat convinced that I am just talking to the ceiling. <laughs> um, but much like a runner who sort of wakes up after months of training to find that they have somehow shaved 30, second, 30 seconds off their mile time, when I put the time in, when I take that five minutes every day in the morning for prayer, I find it slowly and surely more and more easy to find God and listen for him in the rush of my daily life. I learned how to be patient with my prayer by first learning how to be patient with my runs. Endurance training teaches our bodies to commit, and often that makes it easier for our hearts and minds to follow suit. Now, I'm 90% convinced that watching me swim is actually the most boring thing in the world. Like, in the lineup, paint dry, grass grow, Susan Harmon's daily swim workouts. <laughs> Pretty easy. Um, because what you see is me slowly going back and forth at a painstakingly slow pace over and over and over again with what I can only imagine is actually quite horrible form given that I have never actually been on a swim team or had formal swim lessons in my entire life. Um, and inevitably, usually during the course of these workouts, every now and then, someone will come in, they'll hop down in the lane next to me and they'll tear down from one end and they'll tear back and they'll come up at the end and they will be coughing, sputtering for water and clinging onto the wall for dear life. And they'll hang on there, they'll calm themselves down and after about four or five minutes, they'll do the whole thing all over again and they'll swim wall to wall. And at the end of a half an hour, they will have swam eight laps. I will have swam 40. Swimming wall to wall is a terrible, inefficient way to swim and it's an even worse way to live. So when I'm living wall to wall in my spiritual life, which can happen more often than I think a lot of us would like. I pray when I need something, that's about it. I love my neighbor when it's convenient to me or when I feel like it, and there's not actually much room for God at all. But in swimming, steady, disciplined, and sometimes boringly slow laps will often lead to great results. And it can be the same with prayer and meditation. I have to remind myself that if I worship a God who is willing to show up and be with me and wants to be with me, even when life isn't exciting or convenient, um, then surely the least I can do is show up every day and swim a few spiritual laps. Now all of this talk of commitment is really great, um, but I still ask myself on a regular basis, uh, why am I doing this? You indeed might be asking the same thing of me. Um, and you know, why train like a crazy person for nine months at a time? Why wear an inordinate amount of dry wicking and spandex when <laughs> really there's no need for that? <laughs> And my typical glib answer is that um, by doing that, I am able to eat an entire cheese pizza by myself guilt-free. <laughs> but the real answer is, goes a little bit deeper than that. Um, a dear friend of mine and a very accomplished triathlete, Kenny Buckler, once said something that stuck with me. He said that most athletes are running away from something, but the healthiest and the most whole among them are actually running towards something. Now, how often when in our religious lives, when we are trying to live out beliefs, do we simply focus on what we don't do? Don't lie, don't cheat, don't kill, don't eat meat on Fridays, don't eat meat at all. It's always about what isn't happening. But is it really enough just to avoid sinful or harmful behavior? Is that really the apex of a spirituality well lived, what hasn't been done? Or at the end of the day, is it really about not just running away from evil, but instead running toward what is good, what is beautiful, what brings us out more fully into ourselves and into the reality of the divine? Um, 
Most folks, when they start their racing career, will set simple goals of just finishing a race. And that is a wonderful goal and a very important one. But the big question is what happens after that race is done. Um, I'm training for my second, uh, my second full Ironman, and I will be the first to admit that it has been much, much harder this time. Um, because, up until I wrote this talk, my goal was just to finish, which is something that I've already done and that I know I can do. Why train as hard as you can when you know you can already do it? Why attend a religious service on a regular basis? Why worship with a community? Why dive into a sacred text when uh, you know, you're not breaking any major commandments, after all? Now, unlike other traditional competitive sports, um, triathlon really isn't necessarily about winning, especially not if you're not a pro. It's about your personal best. It's about breaking what that previous limit to you for you was. Um, St. Ignatius of Loyola would have articulated the strive and pursuit as the drive towards the magis, or the more in Latin, which is something that I hope everyone in this room already knew. Um, for, our mothers, for our Muslim brothers and sisters, it is that strive toward the jihad. What is the personal struggle that is motivating them forward and pushing them? It's that continual question of what lies within you that can move you towards something greater. Whether it's a longer distance, or a faster time for most endurance athletes, the pursuit is always aimed directly at the horizon. Um, Thomas Merton was a famous writer and a religious figure in the mid 20th century, and he had a conversion to Catholicism as a young man. And in his autobiography, The Seven Story Mountain, he tells a story of a conversation that he had with his friend Robert Lax. Um, shortly after Tom went through the sacraments and was received into the church, Robert said, well, what do you wanna do with your life, Tom? And uh, he thought about it, and, and Merton said, well, I mean, I guess I just, you know, I, I want to be a good Catholic. And immediately Rob looked him straight in the face and said, it's not enough just to be good, Tom. You have to want to be a saint. In spiritual journeys, who we become is so much more important than who we were. Uh, I have a true confession for you all. I stumbled into triathlons in quite possibly the most stereotypical of ways as the result of a breakup. <laughs> And as we all know, when faced with an absolutely crushing breakup, you have one of two choices. One is a drastic haircut, the other is an extreme athletic event. <laughs> and I can be somewhat vain about my hair. So I signed up for a triathlon. <laughs> but I did it with the understanding is that I wanted to say, okay, who's gonna dump a triathlete, right? I wanted to prove who I wasn't. <laughs> I wanted to prove that I wasn't someone bland and forgettable. I wanted to prove that I wasn't someone that you could easily walk away from. I wanted to prove that I wasn't, at the end of the day, perhaps someone who was just unlovable. It was all about what I was running away from. But I didn't start to heal. I didn't start to tell a better story until I finally stopped focusing simply on what I didn't want to be and instead came to know who I was and what I was running toward. What I've learned from racing is that you don't prove yourself at the finish. The moments when you prove yourselves are those moments when every single fiber of your being is finished, when you're done, when you want to stop, when it's over. I'm not talking about those flashes of pain. I'm not talking about those moments of fatigue. I'm not talking about those kind of, I'm tired, I want to stop moments. I'm talking about when nothing is left, when every resource has been exhausted, when there's nothing on the horizon. In those moments, if you choose to continue to move forward, it is not because of anything in your physical body. It is not because of anything in your abilities. It is solely and completely and totally because of who you are. When I ride into 20 mile per hour headwinds for four hours at a time, I don't get off that bike because the reason I don't get off that bike is not because of my Cannondale. It's not because of my clip-in shoes. It's not even because of the hours I've logged in the workouts. I don't stop because of the very same thing that keeps me from giving up on even the most difficult of students, keeps me in having faith in the ability of the world to become more just in spite of news reports that seem to point towards the contrary. It was the same thing that kept me showing up every single day for work when I worked at an AIDS hospice as a Jesuit volunteer and no one got better, and nothing I do seemed to fix anything. When we face into the headwinds of life and refuse to get off that bike, 
this is when we know who we are. This is when we know who God has made us to be. Endurance racing also teaches you the importance of personalization and maturity. If you want to take your races seriously, at some point, you will have to put resources and time into them. Even the most novice of runner will tell you that trying to run a marathon with tennis shoes that you bought on sale for Target at $10 is not going to end well. <laughs> if you don't take your races seriously, your body will pay. Yes. You can finish an Olympic triathlon on an undersized children's mountain bike that you borrowed from your roommate because you didn't wake up in time to pick up your own bike from the shop the day before. You can finish. You'll probably spend the next two to three days on the couch icing your knees. I'm speaking, of course, purely hypothetically. <laughs> but it's the same with the spiritual life. If I'm going to take my spiritual life seriously, I have to understand that my childhood images and understandings for the divine will have to grow and develop. Again, as St. Paul reminds us, when I was a child, I talked as a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like in a child. When I became an adult, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Our life and our faith grow together. We have to look at those, take them seriously, and put that time and effort in them. Otherwise, we'll simply hurt ourselves, whether it's shutting ourselves off from people, denying parts of ourselves, or refusing to grow. We have to put time and resources in. If I walk up to anyone on the street, and said, if you gave me nine months of your life, I could make you an Iron Man, most of them would think I was crazy. But about four months into training after that first 20 miler, or that second or third three or four hour ride on the bike, they'd probably start to believe it themselves. If I walked up to someone on the street and asked them to live their lives in a way where they prayed without ceasing or fasted daily for a month, once a year for the rest of their life, most would think it couldn't be done until they slowly took the time every day to live out the things that they believe in most deeply, and they began to realize that they are capable of something far, far greater than themselves. I want to invite you, when you leave today, to try a little endurance in your life, if you're not already doing so. Again, you don't need to be a crazy person like me, but maybe there's a 5K that you can sign up for, maybe there's a bike that could use a tune-up, or maybe there's a certain 26.2-mile race in October that you keep thinking about signing up for. Get up, get out, and give your life another set of tools to unlock the spiritual depth that is within you. When the finite within us brushes up against the infinite, we realize that it is life and not death that has no limits. Endurance allows our bodies to experience that chase after the horizon, to understand ourselves as capable of far more than we ever could have imagined. And so it is with our souls. Every day, every moment, every achievement, no matter how great or small, is never the last word on a life. God, Allah, love, compassion, whatever name that you have for it in the depth of your heart, that reality is calling us constantly to love and to be loved, yesterday, today, and every day for the rest of our lives. And so knowing this, we press on, understanding that we will come to know more about who we really are and who we can be with every single mile. When the finite within us touches up against the infinite, when the horizon looms beyond, our strongest muscle, the heart, will be what pushes us forward. Thank you.